All right, so in section six, we're just gonna identify the different types of quadrilaterals. So this lesson is really just gonna sum up everything we've learned in the entire chapter. So here we go with our Venn diagram again. So let's go ahead and fill in everything that we've learned about quadrilaterals. All right, so what we know about quadrilaterals in general is they have four sides. We also know that the sum of their angles is 360 degrees. These are things that we've learned. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in all of the properties of parallelograms. And I've done this multiple times throughout the warm-ups and everything. So one property or the definition is opposite sides are parallel. We also learned about parallelograms that opposite sides are congruent. We also learned that opposite angles are congruent. We also learned that the diagonals are bisected. And the last property is um, consecutive angles or supplements. So this is all properties of parallelograms. Next, we're gonna cover the properties of rhombuses. Now, remember, rhombuses have all of the properties of parallelograms and the general properties of the quadrilateral. What's specific about rhombuses is their diagonals are perpendicular. We also know that the diagonals bisect opposite angles. And that's specific to rhombuses. For rectangles, they have all the properties of parallelograms in addition to having four right angles and their diagonals are congruent. And the square, notice it's overlap, those circles. It has all the properties of everybody. It's got all the properties of rectangles, all the properties of rhombuses, and all the properties of parallelograms. Notice underneath here, the rhombuses have four congruent sides, which is also what squares have. So you need to memorize these properties. A lot of the test is this vocab. So make sure you're studying it, understand all the properties. Now, remember that trapezoids and kites are not parallelograms, so they're not going in the box. So I'm gonna put it outside the box. I could put it down here, trapezoids and kites. So we learned that for trapezoids, it has one pair of parallel sides. We learned a specific type of trapezoid an isosceles trapezoid, and that has congruent diagonals and congruent base angles. For kites, they have two pairs of consecutive 
congruent sides. Their diagonals are perpendicular, just like the rhombus and the square. And then we also know that the angles where the non-congruent sides meet are congruent. One other property of an isosceles trapezoid is you have congruent legs. So here are, again, the most recent quadrilaterals we talked about. Remember the diagonals, and we just talked about these properties. So if I draw in diagonals into my kite, Recall that they are perpendicular. Remember that you have consecutive congruent sides in your kite. Opposite angles where the two non-congruent sides meet are congruent. For your trapezoid, Notice here you have exactly one pair of parallel sides indicated here by the arrows. We also learned about a mid-segment. So let's say I draw in here the midpoint and it could be indicated showing that it breaks it into congruent pieces. So this line through here is your mid-segment. Also recall that B and C together and A and D are supplements. For your isosceles trapezoid, if I were to draw in diagonals, remember they are congruent. So you could say that EG is congruent to HF. Also remember that in your isosceles trapezoid, your base angles are congruent. So I could say angle E is congruent to angle F. And H to G. Because it's isosceles. So these are supplementary angles. Next, it says quadrilateral ABCD has at least one pair of opposite angles congruent. What type of quadrilaterals meet this condition? Now remember the quadrilaterals we learned are parallelogram, square, rectangle, rhombus, kite, and trapezoid. Yes? In this case, it's gonna be everything except the trapezoid because notice here it says at least one and that means it could be more and a trapezoid cannot have more than one so this would be everything except the trapezoid okay see if i draw my parallelogram opposite angles so has at least one pair of opposite angles congruent what type of quadrilaterals meet this condition if it's got two then it's not a trapezoid so that's why that one's excluded next one what is the most specific name for quadrilateral a b c d yes Okay, do we know anything about the sides? No. What do we know in this picture? That the diagonals are congruent. Nope. The diagonals are congruent. Nope. 
Good. All we know here is that the diagonals have been bisected. Which quadrilateral tells us this? That the diagonals are bisected. Okay. But we don't have more enough information to show it's a rhombus. Only thing we can show here is that this is a parallelogram. All we know are the diagonals are bisected. I don't know anything about the angles. I don't know anything about the sides. So I cannot narrow it down to a square rhombus or a rectangle. So the only thing I can come up with for this picture is that the diagonals have been bisected, so it's a parallelogram. Is enough information in the in, given in the diagram to show that this quadrilateral is isosceles trapezoid? Yes. Okay, why? Okay, so we could show that these are parallel lines and then we could check to see that these are supplements. So, and then also we could show that the base angles are congruent. So then the converse of that, that the legs would be congruent. So yes, there is enough, okay? Just by showing the base angles are congruent, then the legs would be congruent. Yes, sure. PS and QR are parallel, and this is your transversal. And we can do this by stating that because angle S and angle R are supplementary, then lines PS and QR are parallel. Mm -hmm. Next one. Yes. Okay, next, give the most specific name for this quadrilateral. Anybody have a suggestion? Yes. It's a kite. Because we have two pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. This one is congruent to this, this to this. So this makes this a kite. Next example. Give the most specific name for the quadrilateral. So this would only be a trapezoid. One pair of parallel sides. For a trapezoid, the diagonals aren't congruent, but an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals are congruent. So that was the more specific type of trapezoid. All right, and yes. One last example, give the most specific name. Can we give a specific name here? No, you cannot. So we would just call this a quadrilateral, okay? Because it's got four sides. Because we don't have enough information. We don't know that both diagonals have been bisected. We don't know enough about those sides. Remember to show something's a parallelogram. We would either need to have you know, one pair that's congruent and parallel or both pairs par uh, congruent. There's just not enough information. So there's not enough information here. All we can say about this is that it's a quadrilateral. So this was just an overview of the chapter. Your homework tonight is the chapter review.